Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolades at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333 and this last match today, a request from Kshatria, Kshatria versus Capricious on Trojan Hills. So let's get started. This this seems very exciting. Kshatria going for Cloaky Bot Factory, as is Capricious. Capricious going for the more defensive starting position, while Kshatria going for a much more aggressive one. I mean, for those of you not familiar, Trojan Hills has pretty much this start box, this entire backside or north side and south side of the map. North side for player, one player and south side for the other. So you can pretty much start anywhere here. Players typically start around this cluster or occasionally the cluster in the back, as we see now. Occasionally, occasionally in like 3v3, you'll see someone start in the southeast or northwest, but not usually in 1v1. This is the defensive 1v1 position and Kshatra in the more aggressive one. So we expect Kshatra to go for a bit of a rush, but at this point, going for, yes, a rush, indeed. Size coming in immediately, while Capricious, on the other hand, going for a few glaives. One taking point and the other two following up. Possibly... No, just all direct. All pretty much direct. Just going directly one to the back and the other two to the front where they, I guess, expect Kshatra more likely to be. Also running around the sides here. Not seeing the hill, but at this point that's not super relevant. The hill is not going to matter. This last glaive should probably go over the hill here. I mean, th this is not the time where Kshatra would be expanding over to this hill in the west. That's way too early. And Scythe coming in, which hopefully will not do any... No, it is going to attack! Ah, oh, that sucks. Kshatriya... I mean, it's good to have the Scythe attack. It's not a bad idea, necessarily. It's just that Scythe's are cloaked, so that's so much... And Scythe's decloak radius is pretty small, too. Eh, it's not terribly small. But it's still not that big. So, really, Scythe's, when you don't announce their presence, they can do a lot of scouting, and then they can do a lot of damage. But right now, Capricious is going to be looking for this Scythe, or in theory... No, the Glaives are sitting idle. They're not too concerned about their own lives. Not sure where Capricious expects the Scythe to be. Setting up a Lotus, another Lotus. There's already one set up, but the second one going to be set up. And I think Capricious is just trying to set up Glaives where they figure the Scythe is likely to attack. And the Scythe really needs to attack these Wind Generators. Avoiding that... Ooh, nice. That was very close, too. Avoiding that Lotus. Avoiding the Commander. Scouting out. I mean... Capricious... Capricious is actually not getting scouted out that much. Kshatriya sees a couple of the Lotuses being very careful with the Scythe to make sure that it's not too obvious. I mean, Kshatriya knows where some of these are. And, oh, wow, that's close. That is getting really close to the D-close gradius. But hey, the important thing is these wind generators are vulnerable. But I think at this point, Kshatriya just wants to scout. So doing exactly what I was kind of mentioning they should have been doing, which is good. And going for the Lotus directly. I guess they figured this is the safest way to go. Get rid of the Lotus. Possibly run. No, going straight for the win. Okay, this is suicide. That Scythe is on a suicide mission. That second metal extractor, that metal extractor was way too risky. Oh, no, wow. Capricious shooting ground, trying to get a clean shot in there. At the same time, some raiding coming in over to the so northeast. Kshatra stopping one of the workers. Very good there, because with that worker gone, that'll, that'll hold back that expansion by at least a minute. And Scythe... Okay, I gotta admit, for a suicide mission, that Scythe got value. Like, that Scythe got value, I think, to the point that Capricious doesn't really want to push to these last couple glaives that Kshatra has. And at the same time, Kshatra over to the western side of the map, just harassing on all sides, keeping Capricious from getting any good foothold anywhere. And at the same time, Kshatra is expanding, though not quite as quickly, and Capricious with a staked-out glaive over to the south center. Although it looks like Capricious will get a Scythe of their own within the next couple minutes. It'll take a little while. They are not building it anytime soon. Eventually they'll have it, but it will take a while. And another attack. Another Wind Generator gone, and also a Metal Extractor gone over to the northeast. So Kshatra getting quite a few attacks in, and more Glaives coming in south of Capricious' main base. I mean, just more and more Glaives coming in. Capricious will have a Warrior up in a few seconds. Once that's up, Kshatriya will have a harder, though not impossible, time. It's still going to be relatively simple to get through, because Kshatriya right now, they have a lot of Glaives. And the thing is, you can overpower Warriors with Glaives. Or at least a Warrior, with like six or seven Glaives. It's tough, and it requires good positioning. But yeah, the Warriors can do it. And also, it looks like the Warriors were actually interrupted. The warrior construction was not completed, and this is going to be very bad for Ksha for Capricious. Kshatra should be able to get rid of most of these workers. Won't be able to get rid of the factory. That's not happening. Not with Capricious' commander on the way. 
really the best thing to do right now for Kshatriya is to get rid of as many wind generators as possible. They're cheap targets. They have to be rebuilt. You can't just get energy out of metal reclaim. And now Capricious, I think, will be able to defend themselves. Kshatriya's pressure should be ending fairly soon, or at least the direct glaive harassment pressure. Capricious, I think, has managed to get some respect out of Kshatriya. But we'll see. It really will come down to, I think, the Warriors. The Warrior is the one thing that'll truly stop it. And that's still... Oh, wow. Another... Yet another Conjurer gone. Is that the third or fourth? I think that's the fourth Conjurer that's been destroyed by Kshatriya. That's huge. Every single one of those Conjurers is another minute or so for an expansion. Like, Capricious gets slowed down so much for every one of the Conjurers killed. And Kshatriya is just hunting them down like... Well, I guess like they were in season. It's Conjurer season now. Open season, no permits needed. You gotta skin and gut him yourself, though. At this point, Kshatriya hasn't expanded much. They basically are comfy at 18 metal. They haven't really built up more than that. Looks like they are about to get a bit more energy, but really not much more metal. They do need more energy, though. That's huge. <laughs> They're getting close to metal excess. But yeah, Capricious... I guess because Kshatriya figures Capricious is really behind, they don't really need to expand much. That's risky. Capricious, yes, they have been harassed quite a lot, but if Capricious manages to play their cards right and is careful enough, they could rebuild and get back. The problem right now is that Kshatra is setting themselves up for the harassment game, and they do have a bit of expansion going on, but Capricious, if they push out defensively... Oh, nice, setting up a bunch of nano frames to try to stop the scythe coming in. That's clever. But yeah, if Capricious sets up safely, at this point, Kshatra is actually, well, not that naked, but Kshatra also hasn't expanded that quickly. So Capricious could theoretically out-expand Kshatra even now. Like, if Capricious just expands slowly but surely, gets through, doesn't really do a lot of risky moves, and is able to deal with the sides, of course, that's the biggest thing. But if the sides can be dealt with, then I think Kshatra could actually end up being on par. Also, Capricious has loads of Reclaim in their base. Like, 300 someone metal of Reclaim in their base, so that's a good minute or so of one worker, like an extra plus five, so on par economy for at least a minute. And that's not assuming, that's assuming that nothing else comes in. That's not including all the other stuff coming in that will likely come in from Kshatra as they continue to try to harass. So right now, Capricious is not that far behind. The thing they do need is more energy. That's the biggest thing, that's why it's important to get rid of the wind generators, and Capricious also with their own scythe, finally getting built! There, actually, there's already another scythe, but still. Those two scythes getting built, but Kshatra... How many scythes does Kshatra have? There's... There's 13 on the map, and I think only four of them belong to Capricious. Yeah, we're getting into scythe wars here, so Capricious right now... They're gonna be able to see what Kshatra has, and I think we'll probably be able to find some weak points. I mean, Kshatra does have a fair amount of defenses, but the thing is... They don't have a lot of expansions. Capricious... That's the thing. Their Capricious has been basically able to expand it. Like I said, a slow but safe expansion for Capricious with the Reclaim on top of that. That will open up a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, Scythes remain cloaked, so Kshatra still has a lot of harassment opportunities. And now Kshatra with... Oh, are they getting Reclaim now? They are getting in the center of the map. Losing a bit of that too, though. The scythe from Capricious not moving. Why is the scythe not moving? It's about to get caught out, and it's gonna get killed at the same time once it does that. Actually, Kshatra... Okay, now they care. Like, get that scythe out of the way. Yeah, Kshatra can come in here and deal a bit of damage, and the staked out Glaive actually doing a good job here. Get rid of that worker there. You've got a few seconds to get rid of that Conjurer. That will actually bring things back. Allow Capricious some room to get back in there with this nice harassment. To do that, get rid of the Metal Extractor without being too close to it, because that glaive is going to take a fair amount of damage from that. But yeah, get rid of the Metal Extractors, get rid of the Workers, stop the expansions from being built up with impunity. Unfortunately, Capricious' Commander going down, that's a blow. That's a huge blow, that's about a quarter of their economy, and right now they are desperately trying to remain on par with, Capri with Kshatra, let alone being ahead. Rebuilding is not happening. Why is that not happening? This... Conjurer really needs to be rebuilding the metal extractor over beside the factory here. I don't know what that's not happening. This one over here is happening. Over to the northwest. 
So yeah, Capricious able to get some harassment in, but I feel like Kshatriya has just been harassing far better than Capricious has been, which is giving Kshatriya all the advantage they need. It's a small advantage, but it's enough. I mean, that's what I'm talking about, though. It's a small advantage. There's, like, 7 metal per second. The Reclaim could deal with that. Rebuilding the Metal Extractors would deal with that. I don't know why this Conjurer is not rebuilding the Metal Extractor here. Like, there's a lot of stuff that could deal with the advantage that's currently being afforded by this harassment. Although, unfortunately, not enough defenses in Kshatra's main... Sorry, in Capricious's main base. Kshatra should be able to get rid of the Kokibot factory right away. It's like, what, two or three shots left? Yeah, two volleys left. Cloaky bot factory down. I think Capricious is going to throw in the towel. I mean, some valiant efforts with the Warriors here. Keeping out front, making sure that it's not going to be a complete wash. But yeah, unfortunately, not enough rebuilding there. Capricious did not rebuild when they needed to. They did start building up outside, though. They were never super far behind Kshatriya. Like... Total metal used and produced is actually relatively close for the majority of the game. Near the end, yeah, as you can see, Capricious fell behind, but actually Capricious looks like they had a slight advantage. Mostly due to the spikes and reclaim and such. So, that is actually a lot more, I think a lot more even than it looked. It's just that Capricious was under a huge amount of pressure, and while the line of Gauss turrets wasn't a bad idea to stop sides from getting in, I think what probably should have happened is that should have been leapfrogged. And then some effort to take this area should have been done afterwards. Like, it should have been leapfrogged. Should have been enough of an opening so that workers could get through. Because the size would still be revealed. And then that would have allowed for, essentially, a big attack here. Or not attack here, but a big expansion here over to the northeast. That would have probably helped, or at least provided more targets. That would have caused Kshatra's harassment to be a little bit less focused on the main base. But that didn't happen. Still, a really hard position to be in. I mean, being under that much pressure, that consistently with scythes, that is tough. That is very mentally draining. So I'm not surprised that the game went the way it did. But yeah, that's the thing. It's That kind of pressure, that's the point. Is to put your opponent so far into an uncomfortable position that they're not sure what to do or when. Yeah, a lot of reclaim coming in from Capricious. They kind of had to. But it worked out too. I mean, that's the main reason their income was not that far behind Kshatriya was because of that reclaim. And because Kshatriya wasn't expanding too much when they were attacking. Anyway, that is that. Pretty good game. It means players I enjoy watching on a map I enjoy seeing played. So that was entertaining to me. I hope it was entertaining to you. And... Oh, nanoframes don't decloak. Oh, never mind. It's actually... I was wrong. Okay. So the Gauss turrets, a couple of them would have actually had been made. Thanks, Gazi. I wasn't actually sure about that. So yeah, apparently the nanoframes actually had to be a solid wall in order to stop the sides from getting through. That's really good to know. Hmm. I mean, I guess you could terraform it so that the sides had a choke point and then you put in a turret there to reveal them. I guess that could work. Anyway... That was that, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, and have a good night, everyone.